Hello, I'm Dr. Kimora Scotland. I'm a urologist at UCLA, and we're here to talk today about the causes of kidney stones. But first, what is the kidney and what does it do? Well, the kidney is a bean-shaped organ located at the bottom of the rib cage. And what it does is it filters toxins and waste products. So here in the kidney, a lot of those waste products form urine. And that urine goes from the kidney all the way down this tube called the ureter to the bladder. And then you urinate it out through your urethra. So how do kidney stones form? Well, there are two main ways. The first is that we all have ions and salts floating in our urine. For kidney stone formers, those salts form crystals. And the crystals form deposits, and those deposits become stones. The other way this happens is that stones actually start in the tissue of the kidney. They become bigger and bigger with time until eventually they detach from the tissue of the kidney and fall into this empty space called the collecting system. From there, they can cause some problems. And who forms kidney stones? Well, it turns out that they're quite common. About 11% of Americans and 10% of people worldwide form stones. Traditionally, it was uh, more common in men as compared to women, but those numbers are actually getting closer and closer. And 50% of people with stones will have more than one. Peak ages have been in about the 20s to the 50s, but what we've noticed over the last few decades is that even in kids and in older adults, kidney stones are becoming even more common. We've also noticed that in warmer areas of the US, there are larger numbers of kidney stone formers. Traditionally, that's been in the southeastern US, but that's expanded to the entire south of the US now in what we call the stone belt. We've also noticed that even in the north, folks are forming more stones. Genetics also plays a role in who forms kidney stones. And you'll find that many people with stones will have family members who also have kidney stones. We've seen an association between obesity, diabetes, high cholesterol, and multiple other comorbidities and kidney stones as well. Finally, so why do kidney stones form? Well, it, one of the reasons is changes in diet. And we've noticed that the most common reason people form stones is dehydration. So when we don't drink enough water, we tend to see kidney stones. Also, high salt diets, high sugar diets, and folks who eat things that are rich in oxalates. We also wanted to take a minute here to talk about supplements, because it turns out that some of the supplements that are very commonly used, like vitamin C and turmeric, are very high in oxalate, and this can lead to stone forming as well. What are the different types of stones? Well, most people will have calcium oxalate stones, and those make up 80%. But as you see here, there are many different types of stones, including calcium phosphate, uric acid, struvite, cysteine, and then a smaller number of other stones. And what are some of the risk factors for these stones? Well, the most common reason for forming cal calcium oxalate stones is dehydration. And we'll find that dehydration is also the most common source of most types of stones. Calcium phosphate stones generally are genetically linked. However, what we found is that excessive alkali treatment can lead to stones. And what that means is this. Sometimes we use alkali to treat other types of kidney stones. And unfortunately, one of the side effects of that might be the formation of calcium phosphate stones. Uric acid stones tend to be found in folks with gout and diabetes. It's also seen in patients with inflammatory bowel disease and in folks who have a high meat protein intake. Now, what does that mean? A high meat protein intake actually refers to all kinds of meat, including poultry and fish. Struvite stones, or what we call infection stones, 
tend to be formed because of urinary tract infections. There are certain types of bacteria that can actually, in the process of forming infections, also form stones. You find this also in folks who have problems with bladder emptying because these types of bacteria tend to be associated with stagnated urine. Cysteine stones are generally genetically caused and we tend to see them very early on in life. Now there are some other stones as well that we haven't spoken about. One of the more common is staghorn stones. And what are those? Well, most people are familiar with small kidney stones. However, if a kidney stone remains in the kidney for a very long time, they can actually grow to continue to take up the entire empty space in the kidney forming a staghorn calculus. Traditionally, these types of stones had been associated with the struvite or infection stones, as well as cysteine stones. However, what we've noticed in recent years is that even folks with calcium oxalate stones can sometimes form struvite. There are also some other stones that are much less common, including stones that are formed by medications, such as Topamax, Indinavir, which is an HIV medication, and some antibiotics. Xanthine stones are also genetically linked and are very rare. So how do you prevent most common stones? Dehydration, as I said, is the most common cause, and so drinking lots of water is very helpful. We advise that you drink at least two and a half liters or 85 ounces of water every day to decrease your stone formation. Moderate meat protein intake is very helpful for folks who have uric acid stones. Monitoring salt intake is very helpful for both uric acid and calcium-based stones. And monitoring sucrose and fructose intake is very helpful for calcium stones. Specifically for calcium oxalate, we want to monitor the oxalate intake. And in another talk, we'll be talking about what foods are high in oxalates. You want to moderate your calcium intake. So it's very important to continue to take in calcium. However, it's just important to make sure that you take no more than 800 to 1200 milligrams every day. Increase our citrus intake because citrate, which is found in citrus fruits, is a very good preventative of stones. However, I just want to stress here again that we should decrease vitamin C supplementation since vitamin C, or ascorbic acid, is very high in oxalates. Magnesium is also helpful in preventing stones. As I mentioned, we are going to be having multiple additional talks dealing with all aspects of kidney stones, so please stay tuned.